Following the death of Nirvana frontman Kurt Cobain, the group would disband and drummer Dave Grohl would go on to form Foo Fighters. Foo Fighters' self-titled debut record in 1995 won much praise, as did his follow-up 1997's The Color and the Shape. While Grohl played virtually all the instruments on the group's first record, minus a guitar solo, their sophomore album was the first release from Foo Fighters to feature an actual band. In fact, Grohl hadn't formed a band until he had to support the group's first record on the road. The recording of The Color and Shape was a difficult time for the band and led to the departure of drummer William Goldsmith, something I've covered in a separate video. The link is down below. Despite the tumultuous recording sessions, the album produced some of Foo Fighters' biggest hits, including My Hero, Monkey Wrench, and today's topic, Everlong. Everlong features a bridge with a quiet whispering section towards the end of the track, but what's frontman Dave Grohl singing about, and what's the story behind it? Let's explore that in today's video. During the recording of The Color and the Shape, Dave Grohl was going through a lot of personal problems. The band was working at Bear Creek Studios in November of 1996, but creatively, the group was at their wits end. It was during this time Grohl would receive an envelope at the studio, which contained divorce papers from his soon-to-be ex-wife of several years, Jennifer Youngblood. The band soon ended their recording sessions and took a break over Christmas. The divorce proceedings resulted in Grohl being temporarily homeless, the courts freezing his bank accounts and giving him a small stipend. He would end up staying at a friend's house, sleeping on the floor with almost a dozen other people, telling Howard Stern, I was living in my friend Pete Stahl's back room and he had this dog named Dinky that pissed on me in my effing sleep every night. I was in a sleeping bag in the back room, he'd remember. Both Stahl brothers also played with Grohl in the Washington DC band Scream, the group he was in before he joined Nirvana. Despite the turmoil in Grohl's life, he found hope in a new relationship he had struck up with Louise Post of the band Veruca Salt. Side note guys, I've also done a whole video on Veruca Salt, the link is down below. It's been said that Post served as the inspiration behind the song Everlong. Grohl would talk to Kerrang! Magazine in 2006, discussing the inspiration behind the track, saying, The song's about a girl that I had fallen in love with, and it was basically about being connected to someone so much, that not only do you love them physically and spiritually, but when you sing along with them, you harmonize perfectly. A Foo Fighters sophomore release saw them work with Pixies producer Gil Norton, who urged Grohl to write more heartfelt lyrics, something that was noticeably absent from the group's first album. Everlong came to Grohl while he was in between takes for the song Monkey Wrench, when he played a riff that sounded like Sonic Youth's track Schizophrenia. Grohl initially shrugged off the riff, but still recorded a demo, and he would end up sharing it with Thurston Moore of Sonic Youth, as well as his bandmates. The song would end up being recorded for The Color and the Shape, and it's towards the end of the track that the bridge comes in and you can hear Dave Grohl whispering. For a long time, a lot of people had no clue what was being said in this part of the song. According to Foo Fighters official news group, they used to have a frequently asked question section, which stated there's three separate vocal tracks layered on top of one another for the final mix. One track is a love letter, the second is a technical manual, and the third is a story about a studio technician's father. It wouldn't be until 2008 when the video game Rock Band 2 was released. If you've played Rock Band 2, then you'd know the vocalist is required to sing the spoken word part of the song, and featured Everlong as Nanda's track that people could finally see what one of the vocal tracks was saying. Games like Rock Band and Guitar Hero utilize the master recordings and require each instrumental and vocal track to be separated. If you've ever wondered why vocal tracks or guitar tracks or drum tracks show up of your favorite songs on YouTube, it's most likely that someone extracted them from these video games. If you've played Rock Band 2, then you'd know at least one of the spoken word parts is actually charted, and the lyrics are shown as follows. So dad would take the Sundays off, and that's the only time he could ever get any rest. And so because we were loud on Sundays, he'd make us hold his construction boots over our head till he'd sleep, and they were really heavy boots. And I'd used to say, dad, come on, please, and like start crying, because they're too heavy. On the YouTube channel Produce Like a Pro, they would interview one of the engineers who worked on the album named Bradley Cook, who said the following about the bridge of the song. Assistant engineer Ryan Bosch told us a story. His dad would come home from his night job and he had to sleep in the daytime. When he and his brother were too loud, his dad would give them military punishment and make them hold his boots at the foot of his bed, hold them up while he slept. That's Dave retelling the story, he would say. When asked about the technical manual and the love letter, Cook recalled, I don't know if it was a tech book or just some book, so we did three tracks. It was Ryan's story and a couple of tracks of him reading from some random book, but it appears it's just the story at first and then the other stuff jumps in. I haven't 
thought about this for so long he'd remember. Some fans online claim that one of the vocal tracks, possibly the love letter, features the following lyrics. Someday, somewhere, anywhere, unfailingly, you'll find yourself in that, and only that can be the happiest or bitterest hour of your life. It turns out that that line is a quote from a poet named Pablo Neruda, while the third track, the instruction manual, appears to be from a book about gemstones. Luis Post's girl's former girlfriend would be credited on the track as singing the background vocals and she would take to Instagram earlier this year and share her story about the song saying, the whispered section of the song was originally the dream I was having when the phone rang. It was a dream about us. He, referring to Grohl, later removed it and replaced it with his own whispers, one which was a love letter to me. I sang these backups over the phone at 2 a.m. after being woken up from a deep sleep in Chicago by Dave Grohl, who was tracking the vocals for Everlong in LA. He wanted me to sing the doo-doos which were inspired by our song Shimmer Like a Girl. I wrote a harmony for the chorus and sang that too, she would say. Everlong was released as the second single from The Color and the Shape in August of 1997. The track would peak at number three on the alternative songs charts, but a year later, the song would get a rebirth when Grohl appeared on The Howard Stern Show and performed the song acoustically for the first time. Grohl has always credited Stern with helping raise the song's profile, recalling, I never considered doing Everlong acoustically. I thought it was a rock song. I think it was maybe the first time we did The Howard Stern Show. Howard Stern loved the song. When you do The Howard Stern Show, it's 6 o'clock in the morning and you don't want to touch an instrument, but he asked that I play it acoustically. And so I did, and in a way it gave the song a whole new rebirth. This was long after it was released. It gave the song a whole new life, because I think sometimes when I do it this way acoustically, it really does peel back some of the bells and whistles and the other noise when it's just the lyric and the guitar in my voice. I think it makes the song feel the way I had always wished it had felt, he'd say. Everlong was also notable because the band would perform it live on David Letterman's show after the late night host came back from having open heart surgery in the early 2000s and they would perform the song live as part of David Letterman's last late night show. Everlong would be performed on the band's 2006 acoustic record Skin and Bones and the acoustic version would be re-released on 2009's Greatest Hits album. That does it for today's video guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like button and subscribe and we'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.